To learn Python in 2023, one of the best solutions is to run Python in Excel alongside Jupyter Labs. To show this in action, we get some historical data using Yahoo Finance in Jupyter and save it as a CSV file. Next, we import the data using Excel Power Query, load it into an Excel table and process the data further using Python. Let's dive in to see how we can configure this solution and be able to update all of the data and Python scripts with the click of a button. According to the 2023 Stack Overflow Developer Survey, Visual Studio Code is by far the most favorite IDE. We have been using it in our tutorial so far, but Visual Studio Code is not the easiest IDE when it comes to working with Python. PyCharm, on the other hand, is another popular IDE, and even the free community edition of it simplifies some steps like creating virtual environments and installing Python packages. The paid version offers more features, like database manipulation and native support for Jupyter Notebooks. So as an Excel user learning Python, PyCharm may be an easier solution to start with. If you like, you can install both the community and professional versions of PyCharm on the same device. Feel free to choose your favorite IDE and edition. To follow along with this tutorial, you don't even need an IDE, but it simplifies the development process. I use the free version of PyCharm in this tutorial so that more viewers can benefit from it, but the configuration steps are the same for both versions. Launch the PyCharm Community Edition and click on New Project. Choose a location for your project and a name for the virtual environment. In my case, I choose VNF to be similar to the Visual Studio Code setups on this channel. Select the location of your Python installation as you may have multiple installations of Python on your device. Select Make Available to All Projects if you would like to use this virtual environment on other projects on your device. You can keep creating main.py as selected and click create. As usual, the first step is to install the required packages for our project. We create a requirements.txt file and add some package names. PyCharm let us install the packages with one click and takes care of the rest. Depending on the speed of your machine, this takes some while. After the installation is done, we can test it. To do so, we import pandas as pd and check the installed version of it. When we run the script using the green button, we see the result. Pandas is installed successfully and the version of the installed pandas package is 2.1.1. The next step is to run Jupyter Labs. As we use the free community edition, we need to start it using the terminal. We switch to the terminal and it uses PowerShell as default, which has some security restrictions. Simply switch to the command prompt. The first thing you notice is that the name of the virtual environment, in our case vnv, appears before the prompt. This shows that vnv is already activated and we are using it. Type Jupyter Lab and hit enter. A browser window opens and you can access Jupyter with localhost port 8888. On the left side, you see the file structure of our project. We can add a notebook with the extension .ipynb for interactive Python notebook and give it a name like download underscore data. We put our code in the cells and in the first cell, we import Yahoo Finance. Then we assign the ticker symbol of SMP 500 to selected underscore ticker and define our target file name as gspc.csv. Then we get the historical data from the 1st of January 2023 to the end of January 2023 and show the five last rows using tail. If we check the data frame shape, we see that we have 19 rows and 7 columns. 
and we can easily export the data as a CSV file. We can assign the last row to latest entry using iLock-1. And from the latest entry, we are interested in the closed value, which is in this run 4017. If we check the CSV file in Jupyter, we see that the 19 rows are exported. Back in PyCharm, we see the download underscore data as read only, as we use the free community version of PyCharm. The CSV file is as text and is ready to be imported by Power Query. So we close the files and go to the file explorer. With the right click, we can add an Excel file, give it a name and open it. We navigate to data and get data from text CSV. We choose our CSV file and select load to. Here we choose only create connection and open Power Query Editor. We open the query and rename it to PQC for Power Query Connection underscore GSPC. This query serves only as an abstraction layer. So its purpose is only to select the file and set the header. Therefore, we delete the change type step. All other actions go to PQD for Power Query Data underscore GSPC. And it is a reference to the first query. With this abstraction layer, when the location of the CSV file changes, the only query that has to be updated is the first query and the rest of the business logic stays the same. You can do some manipulation and transformation in the Power Query Editor. Here we simply sort the entries by the date and select Close and Load To and choose Table and New Worksheet. Notice the name of the table is PQD underscore GSPC. You could directly connect a data frame to a Power Query but using a table as an intermediate step has the advantage of visually seeing the rows and sometimes finding simple box. As the column count does not change, we can use a cell next to the table and convert it to Python cell by typing equal PY and hitting tab. Here we can assign the Excel table to a data frame by selecting the table. As you can see, the data frame contains the data of the table and you can convert the cell to Excel values and back. As you know, the order for Python execution in a worksheet is from left to right and top to bottom. And in the worksheets is from left to right. So in the first worksheet, it's a good practice to import additional Python libraries and define some global functions. In the next worksheet, we put the imported data from the Power Query. And then we can create a third worksheet like process to work on the data in Python. In the process worksheet, the data frame DF is already defined and we can use it for our calculation as df is defined on the worksheet on the left side on the process next to the Excel table. In the process worksheet, we convert the first cell with equal py and tab to a Python cell and use the same logic we learned in Jupyter to retrieve the last entry from the data frame. The cells are fixed, but the values can change so we can highlight them using a yellow background. We get the latest closed value from the latest entry just like we did in Jupyter. And sure enough, we get 4017, which is the same value we calculated in Jupyter. We highlight the cells with an orange background. Now comes the interesting part. Notice we had 19 rows in the first run. We expand the date range of our historical data and select Restart Kernel and clear the outputs of all cells. In this run, we now have 166 rows and 7 columns. So the data frame is updated and the CSV file is overwritten with the new 166 rows. 
and the closing price has changed from 4017 to 4514. Back in Excel, we go to Data and click on Refresh. The Power Query reads the CSV file from the same location and imports the data in our table. And we can clearly see that there are now more rows in the Excel table. If we go to the Process Worksheet, we see all of the Python scripts are updated automatically. Cell B12 with the latest closing price has changed too and now shows 4514, just like the new calculated value in Jupyter. Python in Excel cannot access external data, but with this setup, we can overcome this limitation. You can later integrate Copilot, GitHub, Docker, and other services in PyCharm. But this tutorial serves as an entry point to set up Python in Excel, configure Power Query, and use Jupyter to start learning Python in 2023. Good luck.